Hey, I'm Jason O'Dell, and I'm here today in Garden of the Gods Park in Colorado Springs, Colorado. And I'm here today because I want to be trying some long exposure creative photography. And long exposures are really fun, and they require a couple of components for your shots. First thing is a good subject that doesn't move, and these rocks are perfect for that. Second is something that does move because we're going to use a really long exposure. So what I'm hoping today is that these clouds with this wind today, these clouds are going to be moving overhead during my long exposures and create some really cool blurred motion effects. The third thing you need is some solid neutral density filters for your camera. And if you're going to be shooting in daytime conditions, what you need is 10 or more stops of filtration. And what I'm using today are the Singray More Slow filters. They're 4x4 glass filters. I've stacked a 10 stop and a 5 stop. So what I'm going to do today is take some pictures and I want to show you how I set up my camera to use this technique. Okay, I decided to come back inside out of the wind to talk about how to set up your camera for a long exposure shot. So what I've done so far is in the field what you're going to want to do is get your camera You've got to use a tripod for this because we're going to be doing uh, exposures of multiple seconds. Use the lens, whatever which one you choose. I like to use my 16 to 35 uh, Nikkor lens because I can get those really wide shots and for clouds that makes a real sweeping effect. And what I've done is I've screwed on the Lee uh, filter holder adapter ring onto the front of the lens. So this is a metal ring just screws on and you can get them in different sizes to fit the filter thread size of your particular lens. So I've got my camera. I'm going to compose my shot. Composition of course is key and I'm going to pre-focus and I'm going to put the camera into aperture priority mode and I'm going to set the aperture that I want. Depending on the degree of filtration that you have you may want to be using f11, f16, maybe even f22 to really slow the exposure down. One advantage of having more than 10 stops of neutral density filter is that if you want to open up a little bit to modify your depth of field, uh, get better sharpness and not risk any diffraction softness, you can do so because you've got um, a darker filter in front of the camera. So I'm just going to go ahead and set the camera at uh, aperture priority, in this case f11, and I'm in single shot. Uh, compose the image, focus. Okay, you do that. Now it's time to add the filter. So this is the Lee filter holder and it can hold up to three square or rectangular filters. And the first one I'm going to put on is a 10 stop Singray more slow filter. If you can look here, it's got a little foam gasket around this and that's to prevent light leaks. This is a very dark piece of glass. Um, your camera is not going to be able to meter or focus through it. So that's why we set up the camera first with our, our composition and our focus. I'm just going to slide this into the very first slot. And this filter, you'll notice that the two edges here that don't have the foam all the way out to the edge, those are the ones that go into the slots on your filter holder. I'll slide that guy in there. And I'm just going to align it so that the foam gasket is around the edge of the filter holder. Okay? So that's one. And if you want to use this, you can just put it on. I'm going to go ahead and put on the second filter. Now this is a five stop more slow. It's also another four by four inch glass filter. This one doesn't have the gasket. You can use it by itself or you can use it uh, in conjunction with other filters. So I'm going to slide this in there. So now I've got 15 stops of solid neutral density filter. And what's great about this is because I know the degree of filtration, how many stops it is, I'm going to be able to calculate my exposure. That's the next trick. So I'm going to, before I put this on, I'm going to go back here and look at my meter reading in aperture priority mode. So outdoors uh, in Garden of the Gods earlier, my meter reading was about one two hundredth of a second at f11 ISO 100. I'm going to put this filter holder onto the camera. 
Okay, make sure it's secure. And I'm going to close the viewfinder cover, the IP shutter. It's very important that you close the IP shutter. And now I'm going to put the camera into manual exposure mode. And in manual exposure mode, I can set the shutter speed and the aperture independently. I'm going to leave it at f11, which is where I was before, and I'm going to put the exposure to bulb. Bulb exposure means that the shutter will stay open as long as you hold down the shutter release. To do that, I'm going to use my remote cable release that has a lock on it. So I can switch the lock to the lock position, and then it's going to hold the shutter open until I unlock it. Before I do that though, I've got to calculate my exposure. And this is where it helps to have a calculator or a smartphone app to do that. And I've got a smartphone app that all I need to do is open this up. It's called ND Timer. ND Timer. It's really cool. I'm going to go into that app. And this timer allows me to put in on the left hand side the measured shutter speed. Remember that was 1 200th at f11. The aperture is irrelevant. It just need the shutter speed. So I'm going to dial that in. 1 200th of a second. And then the next thing I do is I dial in the first ND filter. And that's a 10 stop. Put on 10 stop. Now with 10 stops it shows me I have a 5 second exposure. But remember I added a five stop filter on top. So then it's got a little button here, it's going to say stack filter. And I choose five stop. And now the readout says two minutes and 43 seconds. Now here's where your bulb exposure and this timer comes in handy. The maximum duration that you can run your, your shutter in manual exposure uh, without locking down the shutter is 30 seconds. So that's why we need to set the camera to bulb. And we're going to use our lock. So with the camera on set on bulb, I engage the lock. I press the shutter release. And then with my little app, I start the timer. It's going to ding at the end of the countdown. And all I need to do to end the exposure is unlock. And the camera finishes. Now if you don't have this timer application, there is a way you can calculate the exposure if you've got a calculator or something like that. And what you need to do is for each stop of light you, you, of filtration that you add, you're going to increase, you're going to double the shutter speed. So for a 10 stop filter, what you'd need to do would be to take 2 to the 10th power, which is uh, 1024, and multiply that by your shutter speed. Or in my case, I would take 2 to the 15th power and multiply it by my measured shutter speed. I'm going to get the same calculation. It's just a lot easier if you've got the um, smartphone app or some other tool to do that for you. This is nice because not only does it calculate the exposure, it also has the timer, dings when I'm done, and that way I can be sitting out there, uh, I wait for the ding, and I'm good to go. So that's the key with the with the long exposure. Let's just recap what we did. We measured an ambient exposure using aperture priority mode, setting the f-stop, noting what that shutter speed was. We closed the IP shutter after we had focused and composed our shot, and we placed our ND filters, our solid ND filters, on the front of the camera. Got that IP shutter closed. We switched to manual exposure mode, put the camera in bulb exposure, we had our cable release, we locked it down, and we held the shutter open as long as necessary. To make the calculation, we took our base exposure and we factored in the number of stops of filtration. In my case, I used the ND timer app for the iPhone. So thanks, I hope that's been informative, and go out and play around and experiment with some long exposure photography. It's a really fun technique to do. It really can give you some incredible results if you do it right. Thanks, I'm Jason O'Dell, and I will see you again next time.